G'day, welcome, Early Crow, episode 54. Six. Six. 56. Well, probably Sammy 53, rundown, didn't bother doing one for this one, so I just assume I'd tuck one on. Uh, episode yep. 56 of the Early Crow is brought to you by Makita. Right now, get amazing bonuses with selected Makita XGT 40 volt and 80 volt max kits and combos. Limited time only, visit makita.com.au for details. Makita XGT. More intelligent, more efficient, more power, more Makita. P Rat. Um, Hello, mate. How are you? We've got um, T Paps still in the land of the rising sun. Mm. Um, I don't know if he's doing a lot of sightseeing because he's very, very up and about in the Discord if we. Uh, Find a winner. Oh my god. Yep. Um He dragged yeah. uh bag dragged big Darcy Cameron, his Mrs. Annie and uh, and Darcy's uh partner as well. And uh they had to sit in the pub and watch the uh, Cox plate. I thought that was a very good form of him. What do you reckon? Well in hindsight it's a phenomenal decision. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. I mean should we get to the best race that was at the Valley on the weekend straight up? The uh, Cox Plate Zoo? is the greatest no, race. Zeus race six on Friday night. <laughs> Cox <laughs> Plate is nice. the greatest race uh, each and every year. Yeah. Um, but this was uh, one right out of the box. It was the um, the most mind-blowing, amazing performance I've ever seen on a race course mm. in my short um, time in racing. Mm-hmm. I'd say. Proper. They fined uh, J-Mac $25 per metre for everyone that he stood up on uh, on Via at the about the 80 metre mark going home. <laughs> I thought that was rather rather cheeky of them. Just get a little earn out of it as well. And they've got a photo that they can use forever and a day. They're, they're going to they're gonna come at you, Praddy, with a bit of uh, animal welfare, uh, oh and safety. Um, James, please remain seated until your vehicle comes to a, a stop. <laughs> <laughs> sort of stuff and, until the uh, seatbelt light is turned off you know that's kind of like um, you know like, like the coppers they got to do their job you yeah know? fair they might want to let you go but they can't I was home by myself on Saturday at that time Michelle went out and uh, I was already mind blown by what was going on when he was at the 300 and just how much horse he had and the run that it was going on and the fact that prognosis looked like it was stopping and it wasn't and then for him to just just to really put an exclamation mark on it to get up at, I said 80, it was probably the 50 metre mark and stand dead straight upright in the, uh, in the, in the stirrups on those, uh, on the he saddle. He gave it a bit, he gave it a bit Crazy. of mirror work too, I thought, like a little bit of it. Mate, he did the T. Papley double gun special after kicking three mm. at the SCG. He's definitely mm. got a little bit of inspiration from Paps, I reckon. He gave him, gave well, him the Paps double bypass. certainly thought so, didn't he? Yeah, especially after I mentioned as well. The best comment was from T. Papley, because he won't listen to this, so we can we can tee off and just hopefully he does. I might cut it up as a reel, actually. His old man will, though, so be careful. Yeah, that no, reminds true. me. No, no, Eyes that's on great. Is brought to you rate this big by time. CTW Excavations. Find them on Instagram. They will go where the big boys won't. You've got when a tight was... access backyard. You want to do a bit of landscape, and you think about digging out a pool. CTW Excavations. Continue, <laughs> P-Rat. When, uh, when I messaged saying, yeah, I think you got a little bit of inspiration there from the T. Papley double python celebration. Paps goes, oh, you've been watching me a little bit too much. Imagine if I didn't watch a Swans game and came on here every week and just didn't watch any of his games. Yeah, anyway, that'll be uh, like your it, was, uh, content. it was good shit. Uh, what a race, mate. Like, at the 400, I thought, 500, I thought Prognosis might have just gone away and kicked away with it. And then you just had to scurry your eyes back through the field a little bit. And J-Mac had plenty of pony. He was making plenty of ground on the outside. And... It was um, weird not to hear an enormous roar when they were going near the post, but I suppose when it was Romantic Warrior beaten Brightside by a lip last year, it's a little bit different when a horse is that far in front at the 150 metre mark. Well, you had two sets, three sets of um, punters roaring last year because um, you know, a lot of people thought Brightside won. Mm. You know, like there were there would have been owners and punters of Brightside that crowed the victory. That's very true. That is very yeah, true. So the, the decibels is bigger. The decibels were big though on the corner. I think. Yeah. And then it was kind of like holy fuck. Yeah. It was an amazing race. At the at the four, five, six hundred, particularly say the six of the five, it looked like prognosis was gonna kick their heads in. Hundred um, percent. All the mail through the week. 
um, as it got bigger and stronger and the race got closer, went from your good mail and your beat SP with your futures bets, a yeah. full credit to you, um, that he's a freak, that he did a bit of form, like people like I did, and you're like, he can sort of, he's a bit of a pig in the barriers and he can be slow away. Yeah. And if he's slow away, how's he going to make up this margin? He's going to have to beat the Versatinas and the bright sides if he's, mm. if Pride Jenny doesn't just kick their heads in. Mm. But he began well. Began and perfect. And Lane, D-Lane just... didn't, didn't use him up. Nah. And he just sat off. Pride Jenny evaporated, did a bit of weird shit. Um, Royal Patronage was thereabouts. They were niggling each other. And he was just he was just under a hold. And he was towing. He D-Lane. was, wasn't he? It's it looked to me like it. Yeah. If VS has seen it just one, maybe they caught D Lane napping because he has just had so much pony yep. as his cornering. Mm-hmm. Uh, but obviously the margin was enormous. In all my time doing um, form, doing ratings, studying and analysing sectionals and everything in between, it is the biggest and best performance I've ever seen in my whole life. Um, my racing life probably extends six, six, maybe eight years, top of my head. Yep. So if you're an old boy or a girl and you're, you're blowing up a bit, I've missed Superimpose or whoever, I apologise. I'm just talking about sort of my era. Um, His time, his raw time, superior to Winks. But you obviously get a raw, you get a raw time by having a pride of Jenny in the race. Yeah. But um, VS has seen his closing sectionals are up absolutely unbelievable. Where were you watching it? Were you in the shed by yourself or? M's actually ventured out, brought all three of them. Um, oh, to watch it all together? Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Darcy said he backed via Sustina too as it <laughs> crossed the line. Um, that's one I would tip, Dad he said. He loves doing that sort of stuff. He was on uh, Carlos Signs this morning in Mexico in the GP. Um, he's a big sort of, oh yeah, didn't I say I was on him? Guy? Yep, love you it. Know? Um, the old after it love it. I don't know where he gets it from. You know, it was uh, it was really really cool to watch. It was um, it it's baffling to think that broadsiding beats Winks in those cock spots. That's on raw baffling. on raw times. Yep, on raw times. Sorry, yes, correct. In a on real race, time. broadsiding would not beat Winks in my opinion. No, I wouldn't but have thought so either. Seen might have. Probably mm. would have. Fucking amazing. Prognosis probably would have. But there's a big gap from him to the broadsidings and the broadsides of, of this race. Yeah. Um, but horse racing and races is a lot about shape and sectionals yeah. and, and mid-race slows or or builds and things like that. And I think if you ran that race with Winx in it, I wouldn't argue with you that she, but Via Sassina beats Winx. I wouldn't argue with you that Prognosis beats Winx but I'd hear both sides of that one. But broadsiding, um, look, I, I think it was a run of a very, very talented horse, and it's yeah. now a genuine big fat number that that horse has next to its name on my stuff. Don't let that trigger <laughs> if you've got your own stuff. It's just my stuff. Um, it's a big number now for broadsiding that didn't have before. He's now got the good SPs and all these group ones, the Queensland group ones and the, the Golden Rose. He's a stallion. He's done and he's dusted. Um, you know, we just now hope for racing that he pushes on and races as a four-year-old because yeah, I think Jack he sets up to be too. very, very hard to beat in next year's Cox Plate if that's what they should aim at. We're a seasoned horse, a little bit like Animo. Yep, that's he wasn't robbed exactly though. What Jamie Carr said. Not, well, Jamie, she just wanted to ride. <laughs> we love Jamie, big fan. Rode Rip Raw, one of the greatest days of my life. Um, but Broadsiding wasn't robbed here. He was just a good run in a great Cox Plate. Yeah, I think the, uh, I don't want to make your head too much bigger, but exactly what you said in the captain's run ended up happening. You, it would look like the horse was off the bit and it was gone at a certain stage because it's never faced pressure like that. I mean, I don't even think you thought it was going to face pressure like that on the weekend. But um, as Jamie Carr said, when she got off, it spat the bit out of the 800 and then kept finding. I think that's the, the signs of a good horse. Hey, those are uh, those three-year-olds that can do that in a cox plate usually go on to be pretty special. Again, yeah. That's what happens. That horse has never been to that sort of tempo in its life. Um, you know, now he'll know he can do it. Um, yep. Whether he wants to go to that sort of level of hurt and pain, 
because that yeah. would have been tough for them. Again, that's what that's, that's up to the trainer and the horse, you know. That's what makes Pride Jenny and Brightside like absolute champions of our sport is that they push themselves to that hurt locker, that lactic acid, that level all the time and they do it again and again and again. Uh, I think some of the... <coughs> some of the narrative around the race... Um, oh, the throat is just responding awfully. Um, first day without a vape, punched one analogue to the back of the head and uh, the... The back of the throat's got a little bit of a tickle, but I can tell you at home, anyone who's on and off them, <laughs> tasted good. <laughs> um, where was I? Uh, I can't remember, to be honest, when you drifted off there. is off its head tonight, and I apologise. Yeah. Yep. Um, Speaking I think, of... Yeah, one thing that's lost in this race is, and this is going to trigger the old boys, yeah, trigger Big Butchie this morning or this afternoon. Prior Jenny's gone really good. Well, she's covered A to B as good as she ever covers it. That's almost near it. She just ran into one of the most brutally run cox plates of all time. Yep. And a bunch of horses that went what a lot, lot better than her on the day. Is that she actually covered A to B quite well? Yep. Does that mean what you're saying is Royal Patronage has also gone enormous for it? Yeah. But the, the royal patronages of the world—that's a big spike, and they're 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 a pack animal, is my sort yeah. of theory. So she's capable of it, sure, but she's never done it before. So you want to see her do it again. Whereas yeah, the, the broadsides, the pride of Jenny's, the broad sightings, the via sistinas, the prognosis of this this race—that's them. Does that? That's their level. To you, with obviously all the narrative around about brightside not being a two thousand. Made a horse. He's gone fucking Guardian. enormous. That's like, what he's gone enormous. Does that just put that to bed. I know it was beaten by ten lengths, but we're talking about one that's fucking proper jumped out of the ground. No, like, well, he's been beat. He's he's run fourth, just just beaten for third. Yep. in the greatest cox plate of all time. Correct. Right. He he was beaten a lip, like pure luck of the bob, in last year's cox plate. Yep. He's an out and out champion of the turf, mm-hmm. and one of the all timers. And he's won a stack of money, but he's also won a stack of proper good races. Yep. He has gone, if you look just at the raw punting form number, Valley, good three, 2040 last year, raw punting form number has done a negative 17.7. This year, Mooney Valley, good three, 2040, same race, obviously. He has done a negative 17.4. So was beaten a lip last year in a cox plate over 2,000 metres, so would have been then said, oh, yep, Brightside can run 2,000, no drama. Look, is the horse maybe better at 1,600? Potentially. But you can't say that the horse doesn't get 2,000. No, not at all. You I can't. Mean, what's fascinating about this is last year's cox plate was quite similar. Yep. So last year's cox plate went 16.1 lengths faster than the all-average benchmark to the 600. Yep. Right? 16.1. This year's race went 19.7. So 3.6 lengths faster to the 600. So when they cross the 600 metres, with the 600 metres to go on this year's Cox Plate, yep. last year's Cox Plate was 3.6 lengths behind the leader. Mm-hmm. It's not an enormous difference. No. Nah. Not at all. But yeah, I just find it funny that, how that... But that, it, what that sort of articulates is how fucking amazing Via Sestina was. Yep. Because she then, went, she then went and then kicked their absolute heads in and he sat up for the last 150 metres of it. He fucking stood bolt upright on it. Mm. Great photo. That's a... Uh, yeah, ripping photo. Was that it, your highlight of the, the weekend, you reckon? Oh, Regal Zeus settling us on Friday night. Um... Highlight, Barraquel, mainly the winners was the highlights. Red Mate, Aces, if mine wasn't its, meeting, its head if out. mine wasn't you tapping me on the shoulder and going, this is Friday night. Hey, mate, remember that bloke who said that he walked to Caulfield? Well, guess what? That's him over there. And actually meeting Zav, who sent in a message in our DM saying that if Duke de Sessa won the Caulfield Cup, that he would walk to Caulfield even better now knowing that he's from Waterball. That was definitely my highlight of the weekend. Him and Macca, what fucking ripping blokes, and the crew from Waterball, you're all oh. genuinely good people. What, but that the was, disappointment uh, of the weekend one of the for me was Zav's, Zav's like just stupidness to assume that I'm going to play his mate off a, off a stick when his mate's off two <laughs> yeah, on correct. his home course. 
Yeah. Like, nah. There'd be no it's office. He's if he's talking to me like I'd make stupid statements like, Oh, I'll walk from Sydney to Melbourne if I can be a scene of Winscock. No, mate. Uh, I'm playing Staleford, I'm happy to play, I'm happy to bet. But yep. back to the Cox Plate. <laughs> it is just the best race year in, year out, and it's a phenomenal and outstanding form reference. Last year, <clears throat> Horse got beaten 7.4 lengths called Pinstriped. Look at what it's done. Come out and won a, did it win a Group 1? Yep. At Caulfield. Fangirl got beaten 1.6, came out and did a job. Gold Trip was in that race. Like, it's a proper, proper form race, and where I think we can make some money out of this year's race is we firstly, um, we thank God, but we're disappointed in you for not letting Prognosis stay for another run because wherever it went, it would have won. Um, Broadsiding, I think they're putting it away. They're not going to the derby. Yep, I did hear that today. Right side, you'd assume tough as nails. Back to the mile. It is Flemington. going back to the mile, correct. I believe Fangirl's going there as well. Uh, bring it on. Yep. Champions Day at Flemington, one of the great days of racing. We we buckle up for one of the greatest weeks of racing. Um, Docklands, no idea what they're going to do, but here, 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 here is the moneymaker. Kovalika. <laughs> Badly outclassed in this race at Wait for Age. Proper stayer. D Lane Book Melbourne Cup. Yep. Twenty six dollars thirty four some joints. Kovalika, down the weights, is a great chance in this year's edition of the Melbourne Cup. The eighteenth fastest last twelve hundred meters <laughs> of the day, Kovalika. The what? The eighteenth fastest last twelve hundred meters of the day. Yeah, off a Kovalika. brutal tempo. Off a brutal tempo. What a tempo. beast. What a horse. What yep. a run. And his Uncle Chris. So they might find 10 lengths come Grand Final Day, which will be this year's Melbourne Cup. So um, put it like you got to factor that stuff in. Um, the other potential money making opportunity out of this year's Cox Plate in the short term is Pride to Jenny. Could get a if, stupid price, you reckon, next if start? They punch on with her, which Tony and Kieran. Who knows? If God exists, he wouldn't. Allah, he's, he doesn't have a clue what Tony's going to do. Zeus, nah. If they if they punch on with this horse, you're going to get a big price. It will be the longest prep of its career if it goes on for one more start. Five starts has been the max so far. What about the other thing to come out of this race and this this sort of like little run of seven year old mares just getting it done? <laughs> yeah. It in the Bella. Everest. Does it just show that sometimes these horses should race on? You just don't know what's under the bonnet. I know freaky things can happen, but you've got Bella Nipatina. You've now got Via Sestina. It's two pretty freakish things to do at that that age. Well, it also shows like like if you're a filly racing against broadsiding, well, in two years' time you won't be. Yeah, because he'll be he'll be at Dali doing some of his best work three times a day. Yeah, lucky him. Um, <clears throat> Animo style so I don't know I'm certainly not going like through the form doing my prices and going oh fuck seven year old mare give it two yeah, months tick. like tick. it's just it's just a it's just something that I found interesting um, I want to get your uh, is that the cox plate done to death you reckon it's pretty much done to death isn't it yeah that was the one that we were meant to go through uh, each and every runner was done on twitter mate so I think the only horse you haven't touched on out of the race what do we do with Evaporate next prep? Oh, just wait and see how it trials and how it yep. comes back. Oh, I thought it was the worst ride in the race, in and out, zigging and zagging. Yep. Put a lot of pressure on a young horse. It's the best performance of its life, beating 17.6 lengths. Yep. The one that I did want to ask you from uh, from Saturday before we maybe get stuck into some Friday night operations, uh, Barrack Hill, race seven in the McEwen. I think it's a Group 1 horse. I think it's a Group 1 race. Um, I think that um, I'm Unstoppable will go to the champion sprint yeah. and be very, very competitive. Yeah. Uh, was enormous first up at Warwick Farm in a low race. Mm-hmm. Um, was 
as good a run as anything there on at, in that race on Saturday. Just the way it jumped and where it had to settle made it unwinnable the way the race was run. They walked early. It was a very slow tempo for the class of race to the 600, which set it up for those sort of on-pace horses, which makes Oscar's fortune, who was heavily backed, a really disappointing and confusing performance. Mm. My male is and might be finding a new trainer. Um, next start, Oscar. Um, Stepati got through the line all right even. Um, the Inferno was okay. Mornington Glory did what Mornington Glory does. But I thought the first two home here, oh, I'm unstoppable. Fastest last 600 metres of the day. It'll go to the champion sprint. It'll be up yep. against Giga Kicks and those sort of horses. Maybe yep. overpass. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, I want to see where it draws and who who's sitting on it. But um, he's, he started $6 in last year's Coolmore behind Osmosis. What a day that was. Fuck me. God bless us, Moses, playing Bill cricket Baker going and off Rachel King. Fucking rocker watching um, that thing win. It started six dollars there when I was trained by Lloyd Kennywell. Uh, it's now trained by Kieran Ma. Both runs for Kieran have been really, really promising. So I'm Unstoppable is a uh, a cult that needs to win a group one and the, the group yep. one they're going to try and win will be the last day of the Flemington Carnival down the straight, ripping mm. and a tearing. I reckon there's a couple in that market that won't go. So the market's Giga Kick, Overpass, Barrakeel, I think Bella's staying in Sydney, Estriella, Sunshine in Paris. I'd be baffled if they didn't stay in Sydney. And then I Am Unstoppable. You're not getting any spoils at $11, but if you were keen to bet... It was 15 bet, this morning. It was 15 this morning. It was 51 before Saturday. Fuck. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. But... Um, I'm getting good at it, but I've got so far to go. Do you want to explain to the punters what you're talking about there? I'm working hard on our futures betting. We've got Duke DeCessor across the line for everyone. Um, I know a bloke whose who's hairline's just given up. That was <laughs> on my football, $15 or $14 to win the um, Goodbye, McEwen. my friend. You have been the one. You have been the one for me. So, hello, baby. Yeah. Fuck you, James. Don't listen to James Blunt if you're in a bad mood, I tell you. It only gets worse. Um, yep. Yeah, that same bloke backed um, Cavity Bay at 10s. He backed... Um, I am unstoppable Royal at Champion at 10s and I am unstoppable at 15s, roughly. And um, might have had an all-up on them too to pay off a mortgage. And they all ran second, doesn't bet the place. Yeah. <clears throat> Back to the horses. Yeah, Barraquel, we don't think going to that race. We think Barraquel is going to the... The, me- the meteorite, it's called. The meteorite, at, but with the clarity of data... Um, at crime burn. They might sort of reassess that opinion. I think they sort of have a view that the horse doesn't handle the straight, but he had genuine excuses when he didn't handle the straight. He was into a fierce headwind that day, 40k plus, so... And it's proved to be a significant headwind and a disadvantage because a lot of horses that faced it have come out and won since. Yeah, um, Nadal, Barraquil. Just to name a couple. So I reckon that's a meeting that you could potentially go back and have a look at a few that faced the uh, breeze down the straight there at Flemington and, and uh, try and pick the eyes out of a couple that weren't suited because uh, that form is turning out to be pretty good. I mean, Moby Dick the other day should have fucking pissed in but got coffined. Um, but yeah, anyway. Go and have a look at that. No, nah, we back to the window that race, didn't we? Was that Barber race? Uh, it was Barber's race, yeah. Yeah. Fuck, maybe it did. They can get, yeah. I think it was... Barber was from the same race as well, wasn't Barber it? Barber was from the Barraquel race at Mooney yep. Valley. Ah, where that's they, right. Where they ran a 1,200 as fast as... Um, that's right. Southport, Southport Tycoon. Tycoon. Yep. And it's funny because obviously it didn't, wasn't a good race. He didn't get the big rating. But somehow they opened him 480 and he jumped... What did he jump here? I don't know how that would happen. Yeah. That was interesting to me, wasn't it? Was that interesting to you? It's always interesting to me, especially when you point him out to me. Well, wasn't it interesting that despite getting a lacklustre um, rating because he ran in a benchmark 84 the start prior, so his run was nowhere good as Southport Tycoon's if you measure it on the old scale, right? Because Southport Tycoon was a group one. Well, how, how was he? How did he open almost favourite and why was he so heavily backed? Yeah. I think it's that A to B theory of how fast they run, I believe. Can be that one. It would seem likely. Yeah, it would seem likely. But, yeah, it looks like, an, it looks like a pretty good form race and 
yeah, Barracuda looks pretty exciting. So, I think um, the other horse that looks super exciting from Saturday, if he can put it all together, and there's a horse that we, we weren't on on Saturday, although we should have been because I had it $4. Oh, mate. Don't. Um, but the horse is... Um, plenty. Plenty of ammo. A horse yep. that we actually love, P-Rat and I, and all the mailbag people that are with me. Um, because we took like 7 or $8 this horse at Ballarat that day, remember? Mate. Stop. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> you know what's funny? How funny is, that is a maiden? it? That, uh, I think it was. Hang on, I can check. I think it was it, like a 64. It was. Oh, that was the day that it pissed in, wasn't it? It pissed in, it and then pissed it went in. to sand down, and they put up like a dollar forty. Yeah. A dollar forty into a dollar eighteen and pissed in there as well. That's right. Mm. You know, I love um my mind automatically went back to the bad beat where we backed it at Flemington and we took tens or whatever. Like, isn't it funny how your mind, like, mm. you have all these good winners as well, but the first thing you think of as a punter is like, how did I get fucked over by a horse? Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember that. Oh, day. like, even even we backed, like, on Saturday, we backed Barraquel and, and I am a stoppable in the McEwen. I was... Yeah. You're headless. Oh, and I was kind of like, all right, we'll take it, but fuck. Yeah, what could have been? What could have been? But, yeah, that was that was a pretty impressive win, Dico. Yeah, it was. Um, full credit to the horse. I thought it had more favours than it had live when I reviewed the meeting. It was a very good performance. Um, yeah. Proper horse, group horse now. I think I think it'll win a group one eventually if they find the right sort of race. Yeah. Um, I think Royal Champion will win a group one in Australia. Um, just have to find the right sort of race. They're the right stable to do it. He improved significantly off what he did first up and the markets gravitated to him both times. Um, Watching it live, I thought the race I thought we were was home. Yeah, I thought A, I thought we were home. B, I thought the race was kind of like the future history race where Mark just handled them, but I didn't realise how hard they actually went up no, front. No, 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 no. Yeah. So when they when you're watching realize. a race and they take and they're changing positions at the front, like the Peloton and yeah. someone else is coming out of the pack to, to jump out outside the be. leader and shit. That's yeah. tempo and that's pressure. And that's yeah. what you don't want when you're on the leader. We were on mm. the leader. Yeah, it was a setback. I was going, oh, fuck, be tough. It's going to need to be real tough. It's going to need to be real tough. And then when it when it cornered nicely, it did courtesy corner of nicely. the big King Kong of the Victorian jockey ranks, Mark Zara, I thought, yeah. we're going to get away with this. It's going to be tight. We're going to... Oh, no. Oh, fuck. Nah, plenty of ammo jumped out of the ground, which uh, the boys in the den were on. They, uh, they had a good set on Saturday Versus us versus them. I think we had a better set. We, we, we probably did have a better set a better in general. Set. Just didn't get We paid. ran second about four times. Yeah. One of them was in a race where you backed the winner. But yes, I think there was three other races where we ran second. Fucking henline. How did but, Magic Time go past that thing in Sydney? Like, mate. I, uh, fuck if I know how that horse didn't pick up. Mm. Fuck if I know. I believe that's going to a Sir Rupert Magic mm. Time. That'd be interesting. But... um. Speaking of being tough, mate, Regal Zeus, Friday night. Have you yelled louder at the valley? My voice has only just recovered. Well, I wasn't sure what happened, to be honest, when I woke up. Um, I had the beautiful actually, let, taste. Let, can we, let's rewind, actually. That's a very good point. <laughs> so you organised on Friday afternoon, client to the mailbag bloodstock, just to, just as something a little extra on top of all the other great stuff that you do. For... Nah, well, I've got problems, and you know, you know this now, and... My old mates know this. And my die, she knows this. Mother Teresa. I knew I had to go to the races on Friday. Yeah. Because I had a horse racing. And then I thought, well, I'm not going to be able to help Emma with the kids at all. So I'm going to get there before. I'm going to have to leave earlier. And I hate driving in the traffic to Mooney Valley. You want to go there with a clear head and be happy. And I don't mind driving for a while, but I just don't like, I, I like to roll when I drive. Hunters at home, I can tell you right now, he had a fucking clear head when we got to the valley. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> so then I thought, why don't we have a few drinks with all the owners just to invite anyone who wants to come? It was a great R, though. There was about, what, 30 people there? 25 people there? I thought it was more than that. I don't know, it, though. It was good little. It was good uh, catch up with a few of the owners that were in a few horses. But yeah, and then because I, I was doing that, to... I thought, well, why don't I go and have a lunch on the way in and catch <laughs> up with an old friend? And I did. Yeah. And I caught the train in, which was bliss, peaceful. Yep. I really like catching the train once in a while. Headphones in, just relaxed. I love catching the train home. Like, yep. I truly enjoy it. One of the worst, most hated things in my life is an Uber home in, from the city now. Yeah. 
It's just 25 minutes to 20 minutes too long. Yeah, okay. I hate it. Small, too much small talk for that amount of time? No, nah, it's no small talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's no small talk. <laughs> but I just hate it. So, yeah, I was... um. Yeah, I thought you were going to get to... I was thinking you might be in second gear when you get to the Ascot Vale. You're in about fourth already. And I was like, oh, <laughs> fucking, here we go. Here we go. The luncheon's going well. Caught up with a with an old mate, as you said, who seemed fine. I don't know what, what the girl was there, but anyway. Um, yeah, good Arvo, stuff. mate. Then we, stro- then we strolled on down to the valley. It was a disappointing result with Marshall. I'm surprised you yeah, didn't just Pratt run over Ross, the nine. Pratt and Ross Why didn't you just run over the 955? The they said, we'll drive, you walk. <laughs> no, that is not what happened. All right, I just because I look fitter than you blokes doesn't mean I am. But I'll walk. <laughs> and um, then I got to the valley after... Um, Benny Hayes came to the drinks and was great entertainment and great Ripping value. Bloke. Full credit to Ben Hayes Ripping and bloke. the Hayes boys. And, oh, speaking of Ben, locked in for one of the Hayes boys is locked in for me and you at Werribee. They're going to be there. I'll most likely have a runner. They are going to come in the marquee with us into the stalls that you and I are hosting, Werribee Cup Day, Sunday the 8th of December. Hopefully. Your... Some of them might be in Hong Kong. It's a big Hong Kong tour. Oh, Maybe he wasn't thinking of that, but regardless. He might have just said yes, I think. He might have just said, yeah, maybe he's a yes man. But he's anyway. yes man. We'll get somebody to get into to say something negative. I'm going to swear. That's about it. Yeah, which I was pretty surprised about. But um, yeah, you and I in that marquee, mate, it's going to be good fun, Werribee Cup Day. I actually... From Severe the... anxiety. Severe anxiety. Really? Not about Not about Werribee, about getting into the races. It was like their obsession with ID at the races. Oh, into the valley. Oh, and the owner's line was enormous, um, and time's ticking. I've had to walk there, um, <laughs> but then I felt safe once I got in. Found Gav, found you. Jesus yep. settled me. Yep. Like Jesus does to you know Catholics and Christians, Gavin Benchgood does that to me at the races. Just settles you. It's always a bit angry. Always yep. a little bit serious. Oh, he's angry because you called him yet again when he was fucking sat on a horse. Oh, how would I know? I don't know. It was like 30 minutes before your horse was racing. Maybe, you know, put two and two together or? Yeah. No, well, <laughs> I'm not perfect. Everyone yeah, fair, knows fair. That, Especially Gavin. Yep. No, it's a shame. Marshall Music pulled up with EIPH, yeah? Yeah, which means like he's had a little bit of a bleed internally. He's yep. um, he's had a genuine excuse for running poorly. That race rated enormous. Mm. They covered the 1,200 metres, I think, the same or similar time to Barrack Wells' That's race. That's crazy. That was how fast think. they went. Um, and yeah. There's only a benchmark 80 and a really sort of benchmark 64 horses. So, I'll pray for she's bulletproof going up a good price um, then. And shout out up. to um, Kenny or Spenny or whatever that. Um, the reason I took the horse with Gavin to the 1,200 metre race at the Valley to spot him never have won beyond a thousand you simpleton and moron is because um the horse traveled deluxe at sale and it traveled deluxe at sandown under the new training regime that gavin has given it and the horse is a benchmark 64 raider who races for 50, 50 to fifty five thousand dollars on a wednesday that race is worth 150 yeah it was going to be the last one for his prep because we got him from anthony so we thought, why not have a crack at it? Yep. It yeah. If you don't travel- like the math on that decision, then keep doing what you're doing and try and hang shit on me and don't buy horses with us. Shin gave it a you peach You do you and I'm going to do me and <laughs> I don't regret the decision. The horse did not get 1,200 because he doesn't get 1,200 metres. He didn't get 1,200 because he bled a little bit. Yeah. Got E high. E- E-I-P-H. And it was a setback. Yeah. He probably is a 1,000 metre horse. That's the only thing you're probably right about. Yep. He, uh, I thought Shin gave it a peach as well on on oh, Friday. Blake Shin does. Blake, th- he's a, he's a, a he great just, rider. He summed that up well. If you, you would have loved to have known where the horse might have finished, it may not have beaten the winner. In like that thing, flew home. But yeah, it's a shame that we didn't see the best of the horse in the day. But as you said, tip it out now and bring it back after Christmas. I thought the Valley on Friday night was good vibes. Um, there was a oh, reasonable crowd there. It, it was wasn't... great vibes. Uh, Zav, big Macca, big Thicky. Got yep. their whole pony laws and their laws in front of them. Yep. Uh, Big Max going with the, just like sticking with the chinos. I don't know, the chinos and the arms, I don't know if he's from the bush or he went to a private school or a bit of both. Um, but <laughs> you're nailing it, Big Max. 
Um, you look like great value, and I really would like to play golf with you. Um, yeah. Respectful, but took enough of the piss. You know, you don't want dot balls. The lads were fucking on on uh, on on Friday night, and, and I think it Zav, was Zav's like a, Zav's a big fan of his own work, and he Zav fucking was a ripper. hates he's how wrong he was. Tell you who else was a rip? What a, who else was a ripper? Matt was an absolute ripper. The guy with the curly hair, the taller guy. He was good value as well. He's a massive fan of ours, likes all of our posts and gets around. It was great to meet a few people out on course on Friday. But I've got one to, to actually speak to you about. As we're walking down, horses have just gone through and we're strolling down on the concrete. Oh, no, you and I are standing next to each other and I got heckled and you didn't. How does that make you feel? I'm just some fucking pleb. I just assumed it was one of your mates. No, nah, it wasn't one of my mates. Because you kind of him off. Like, I'll come and talk to you later, mate. Nah, like, like you were nah, a nah, nah. So... Somebody must obviously listen to this podcast and yelled out at me. Fucking kudos to you. You absolutely rattled me. I've never been And you made his night before. and you've made his week. He's brought it up seven times today on Monday. I've brought it up once, you um, fuck it. And it, no, it really has made Praddy's fucking day and it made his night. He mentioned it about 17 times Friday night. Oh, th- so again, the next time we're at the races, spammy. which will probably be Thursday at Flemington as a team. Yes, we will be. If you see him, get around him. He loves yeah. it. It was a, it was absolutely a good... loves it. And it's good for his mental health, and it's good for mine. What was all time is I actually, seriously, whoever that was, did not know whether to turn around and give you a thumbs up or just, like, brush it off or just, like, put your hand up or whatever. <laughs> Never been heckled like that in my life, so that was fucking right, fantastic. Jack, <laughs> and then you turned around and fucking stared at me, and I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, yeah, don't know what was going on there. You just assumed it was one of my mates, but anyway. I got Snapchat or TikTok or something getting KFC, which is not good. I would love to see that. If if anybody is listening who actually did that Snapchat or TikTok of Dicko smacking, was that um, Mount Alexander no, Road, K-Fry? Yeah, but you had to keep it simple, right? Because I'm about to get an Uber for a yep. long, painful journey. And I'm thinking, do I really want to have the potato and gravy and chicken and <laughs> Uber or not? You know? So hang on, so you went away. It's been a long from- night of talking to people. It's been a long day of talking to people. I normally just hide in my shed with my kids and my missus and my wife. Yeah, be a hermit. I was exhausted. So yep. I just took the opportunity just to get a simple zinger, a little small chips and a Mountain Dew. And I just enjoyed it uh, yep. by myself on, on a brick brick sort of wall edge just quietly. The little retaining wall outside of KFC? Yep. What? The little retaining wall outside of KFC? Yeah. yeah just me, think... me and the colonel. <laughs> I did a reset right. before I got in the cab because I had to really talk to myself to have a better attitude than I had about getting in the Uber. Yep. What, um, was it one of the better K-Fries you've had? Is it up there? It was there solid. Or? It was solid. Yeah. That's I'd what go you back want, there. That's, that's Crispy, gotta be, strong, yeah. It's got to be a big wrap on that K-Fry if you'd go back there, so. Yeah, I'd definitely go back there. Yeah. Yeah, but no, nah, Friday K-Fry. night was a, Friday night was an absolute ripping night, I thought. I thought, uh, it wasn't too cold. It was a yeah, good but atmosphere. it's also it's also a good night though because we backed Regal Zeus and we won for the night. Like if Regal Zeus lost, would have been a drive grim. home. It would have been a little grim. That was fucking tough. That was a it was a good ride. It just got there. I thought it was going to be like and the last three should, starts when we backed it. I don't know if I should name him, but I won't. But he'll know who he is. I'd just like to thank him from the bottom of my heart for not answering my phone when I called him twice after the races. Was that? After you called me or before you called me? After. Uh, yeah, I was looking for somewhere else to sort of continue on at. And yeah. Couldn't think of anywhere good. And I thought one, and then he didn't. So then I went home and I'm glad I did. Because yeah. Little Athletics was tough enough on Saturday morning. <laughs> yeah, you weren't your most sprightly self when I spoke to you on Saturday morning. Uh, Friday night, Dicko, while we're on the topic, uh, anything that of note? What did you make of Akita Sushi's winning the gold uh, cup? Like, good, but not great. I think yeah. she's bulletproof will go on to bigger and better things. It's a proper number she ran, and or he... I don't even know what it is. Um, not a champion yet, Brady, so we don't need to nail the sex. Yeah, fair, fair. Yeah, <laughs> it, is, it is a four-year-old man. <laughs> Got him gone. Oh, I'll tell you a story. Walk about. It's a four-year-old man, mate. It's a four-year-old man. Uh, you know, did I, I think I went with she, didn't I? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, she's um she's got a an exciting preparation ahead of her for Charlotte Littlefield and uh, Craig Willow Williams. Outside of that, to be honest, I don't even remember much of it. 
I really had a crack on Friday night. I set and I forget and I won. So leave me alone. Uh, I yeah. know Port Albert beat Fizon in the last race. Fizon was almost a bet and it looked like it was going to win. Um, and just like so happy I didn't fall into it. Yeah. Yeah, I thought... Um... Uh, we're just texting We're texting Paps <laughs> right now and uh, he's saying he's walking the streets and I'm saying that'd be perfect. Stop making excuses. I'm saying... I'm about to say, I feel like Chris Judd when he was at Carlton. Carlton and Big Lips. I'm really enjoying my work tonight. Well, um, well, uh, <laughs> he's listening to James Blunt before the show, fellas, and uh, and lasses for whoever he's listening in now. He's, he reckons he's on fire. Um, oh, I was so low. I was so low. I was listening to James <clears> Blunt. Like, I reckon, uh, I don't know what It's a great th- album, though. It's a great album, Back to Bedlam. Really great yeah, album. Yeah, you've got to be in the right mood, though. Fuck. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, What did you make of Bridal Waltz? That was one that interested me. I didn't think it was given much of a steer round the valley. I didn't. don't remember it. Don't remember it, yeah. I reckon that might be one that you can half have a look at, to be honest. I have um, on my schedule... Uh, Tuesday or Tuesday afternoon, night or Wednesday morning to just polish off the the review has been done, but I don't remember it. Yes, yeah. uh, my assistant from Janali has done the bulk of it. Um, I need to go over it on Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning. Yep. For fair, fair. When the brain's a bit clearer, huh? Friday. Oh, it's clearing up. I mean, I got a big swim tomorrow, a bit of Cairo. I basically yeah. What, full training. What's the how many laps of the fifty meter pool are we going to do tomorrow? Just depends, because i got Cairo, and i take Ems. So, like, what's her patience level going to be like? Is she leaving me to swim, or have I got to drop her home and come back, and how far behind am I from a day? Yep. Little things. Um, I'll I'll be aiming for 30. And you you went for a run today, I believe. Yeah. What, are you going to get into triathlon soon? I Where's your bike? I get out of a gallop for the first 400 to a K. It was, like, it was so grim. Yeah. So bad. And then luckily there was another bloke running near me that just sort of, my ego got me to go a little bit harder. And then, um, luck, what was that because you were seeing double? My dog is like a cat, even though she's half Kelpie. She refuses to run half time. She had to peg. Um, but Darcy is now at a stage on his bike. So he goes on the bike. He's at a stage on his bike where he's good, like really good at his five. So I like, I like shove him back or I push him off onto the grass and I bolt. And he gets up and he chases me. It kind of gets me to keep going. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and shout out to Darcy's Safety. broken knee because you keep pushing him over. No, I don't push him like... I know what you mean. You just give him a little gentle just margin push him then. onto the grass, not push him like over. <laughs> like, But the grass slows his little pins down. I get a little bit of a head start and I go. Yeah, love it, mate. That's great. What else? Uh, that's probably the, the racing done to death. Was there any genuine black... We're going to be talking about running pretty like I do it. It was yeah. the first run I've been on, I reckon, for 2020. Mate, I just what, started you know, swimming we? last week and all the week before, and now you started running. I'm just waiting yeah. for the fucking road bike to come out and Dicko will be in the fucking Ironman. No, at I'll, some point I'm soon. not trying to be the best at exercising. I'd like to play real sports. <laughs> Fair enough. And just not die and keep up with my kids. So when you do, uh, what, Makita ad reads, you don't run out of breath. Is that the, the reason why we're doing it? No. No, but I'm certainly... If I ever do an Iron Man, you've got permission to smack me in the face. Done. Call me a loser. Done. Next thing, I'll be shaving my legs. I need five razors. <laughs> I want my head. Yeah. Goodbye, God. my lover. Goodbye. Obviously, as I said, the ADD is off its head today. I'm now on to... Learnt something today, too. Off, um... He couldn't get him over the line for me on Saturday, Mark Zara, but he did teach me what two points means in the NFL. Safety. Um, it's a safety. Now, a safety is essentially when the offensive team is tackled in their end zone or does something wrong in that regard. And that's how they get two points. Because you might be like me, thinking it's three points for a field goal, six points for a touchdown. They might get a two-point conversion or a one-point one field point. goal. But... That that's how they scored. Well, no, they can also get two points. Yep. And uh, I was just sort of asking because I was bored because I went three now this morning and I wiped it. You Perhaps didn't know zero yeah, and three. Zero and three for T. Papley. Zero the fa- and three. The lazy um, fade didn't work this week. 
Lazy fade didn't work. Juzzy's still really starting. He's not got warm. We thought he would. He hasn't. Um, it's two and one. He went two and one this week. He's still a mile behind. Yeah, but that's and, momentum. Um, if you're if you're starting to bet or follow his tips from now, this is the this is the momentum stage. Well, for, I thought that too, but for the like, crust, you, you, you kind of look at you kind of look at the um at the slate, and if there was two bikes, if there was three bikes, I would have said, hey, keep an eye on them. They probably know what they're talking about. It was Justin McInerney, Matthew Punts, and Regan Bayless. Regan's gone none and three, and is nine and fifteen, and is currently last. No, he's second last from Juzzy, who's six and eighteen. Yep, I'm still and sticking Punts by. Is on eleven and thirteen, like me. He'll go on a run, Juz. I'm still putting. I'm still, uh, still backing it, and still going to take his little doubles each week. I reckon. Well, he needs to. Yep, he's been a disgrace. Yep. Um, I can't remember where we were. To be perfectly honest. I tell well, you what, Pratty's doing his best to keep up with my ADHD brain, which is flaring right up today. And I apologise yeah. if you haven't been able to keep up with what. That's nah, all right. Yeah. It was um. Kept sometimes up it happens. Friday. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, that's enough of the pigskin. The NFL. I went three and zero. Paps went zero and three. Pratty, you go three and zero as well, didn't you? Three and zero, brother. Yep. That's right, baby. Uh, F1 this morning in Mexico. It was Mexico. obviously in Mexico, so it was a later start, and I was able to watch the whole thing. Um, the Ferrari boys were very, very fast. Verstappen was slow, but super, super aggressive. That boy drives an F1 car like it's a fucking video game, and it's yep. great to watch. Was that when uh, I saw he pushed, was it Norris off the track at one yeah. point? Yeah. Yeah, he really like just said, fuck off, He just mate. does Get not off. give two no, fucks, He got two 10-second penalties. He went and pitted. He was back. <laughs> um, the Australian Oscar Piastri. Mm-hmm. was back in the pack but made good ground all day lots of overtaking super fast um, Lando bounced back after he got past or like once um, Max pitted he had enough speed to get past Charles Leclerc and claim second McLaren's doing outstanding Ferrari getting warm the Constructors Championship's going to be worth watching for the remainder of the F1 season and Verstappen still holds the lead or you can stop doing spoilers for me and when I start watching it next February when it's on Netflix, the drive, drive to Survive, then I'll be able to enjoy it in all of its glory. <laughs> you do you. Yes, correct. Uh, I reckon that's about being the early crow, Pretty. Yep, it does. Now, next week, it's an absolute punt-a-thon Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. We can't... We'll, we will guarantee that there will be a show out next week. It will probably be, most likely be heavily... Horse racing focused and short because next week is a rather big week on the tools. So we will be with you. Will the Monday night podcast be as it is? 50-50, but we will get something to you next week as uh, definitely one show. Um, there might be more. There may be less. We'll just see how we're going for time. It's a uh, it's a great week of the year, Dicko. Uh, Derby Day, Cup, Oaks, and then what is Champions Day now? It's, uh, it's a great it's, time of year. It's uh, one of the uh, best times of the year. It'd be um, the front paddock's going off its head. They're just growing so fast. The veggies out there, chickens come back to life. Thought we had one. But now still got two. Oh, uh, Bendigo Cup. Bendigo Cup Wednesday. Bendigo meeting the nursery of champions. It's always a great meeting. I think Jimmy Starr kicked off his Australian career this meeting last year. Interpretation, Brady. We backed it. It won the uh, Bendigo Cup. I think Mickey D wrote it. He did. Um, I reckon Moby Dick went around this meeting as well at about a dollar fifteen favorite and got rickrolled too. What was that? I reckon Moby Dick ran this time last year, unless I'm mistaken, at about a dollar fifteen and got rickrolled as well. Yeah, it's a good meeting and it's a good warm up for Derby Day, which obviously is just an enormous day. Um, it's a lot of form and a lot of work uh, for me to do, so it might limit what we can produce content wise, but we will give you our word to do our best to get something out as many yep. times as possible throughout what is the the greatest carnival of the year, the Flemington Carnival. Uh, always was, always will be. Uh, we'll be back. We're not sure when, but it'll be soon. Remember, The Early Crow is brought to you by Makita. Makita.com.au I've forgotten what else to say. I'm fucked here. That would be Dicko. This uh, show is brought to you by Makita, which is right now. 
Look at that. Get amazing post. bonuses on selected Makita XGT, 40 volt and 80 volt max kits and combos. There's no hair transplants there. Visit makita.com.au for details. Maybe they can get on board. Makita yeah, yeah. XGT. More intelligent, more efficient, more power, more Makita. Get around us, Oaks Day. We'll be back next week. Have a phenomenal weekend and gamble responsibly. 1-800-858-858 or visit the website. Be nice to each other and goodbye for now. Bye for now.